Good morning. Today uh, we celebrate the 32nd Sunday in Ordinary Time, and Mass will be celebrated for the repose of the soul of our old pastor, uh, Monsignor Edward Zeitler. Uh, it's good to have you here with us. Let's begin. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace and peace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all, and with your spirit. My brothers and sisters, let us acknowledge our sins, and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. You were sent to heal the contrite. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. You came to call sinners. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. You plead for us at the right hand of the Father. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us. Forgive us our sins and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Glory to God in the highest. And on earth, peace to people of goodwill. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you, we give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, Heavenly King, O God, Almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, Only Begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Let us pray. Almighty and merciful God, graciously keep from us all adversity, so that, unhindered in mind and body alike, we may pursue in freedom of heart the things that are yours, through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the first book of Kings. <clears throat> In those days, Elijah, of the prophet, went to Zarephath. As he arrived at the entrance of the city, a widow was gathering sticks there. He called out to her, Please bring me a small cup full of water to drink. So she left to get it, and he called out after her, Please bring along a piece of bread. She answered, As the Lord your God lives, I have nothing baked. There is only a handful of flour in my jar and a little oil in my jug. Just now, I was collecting a couple of sticks to go in and prepare something for myself and my son. After we have eaten it, we shall die. Elijah said to her, Do not be afraid. Go and do as you propose. But first, make me a little cake and bring it to me. Then you can prepare something for yourself and your son. For the Lord, the God of Israel, says, The jar of flour shall not go empty, nor the jug of oil run dry, until the day when the Lord sends rain upon the earth. She left and did as Elijah had said. She was able to eat for a year, and he and her son as well. The jar of flour did not go empty, nor the jug of oil run dry, as the Lord had foretold through Elijah, the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Praise the Lord, my soul. Praise, Praise the, the Lord, Lord my, my soul. soul. The Lord keeps faith forever, secures justice for the oppressed, gives food to the hungry, the Lord sets captives free. Praise, Praise the, the Lord, Lord, my soul. soul. The Lord gives sight to the blind. The Lord raises up those who are bowed down. The Lord loves the just. The Lord protects strangers. 
Praise, Praise the, the Lord, Lord, my soul. The fatherless and the widow he sustains, but the way of the wicked he thwarts. The Lord shall reign forever. Your God, O Zion, through all generations. Alleluia. Praise, Praise the, the Lord, Lord, my, my soul. soul. A reading from the letter to the Hebrews. Christ did not enter into a sanctuary made by hands, a copy of the true one, but heaven itself, that he might now appear before God on our behalf, not that he might offer himself repeatedly as the high priest enters each year into the sanctuary with blood that is not his own. If that were so, he would have had to suffer repeatedly from the foundation of the world. But now, once for all, he has appeared at the end of the ages to take away sin by his sacrifice, just as is it appointed that human beings die once, and after this, the judgment, so also Christ, offered once to take away the sins of many, will appear a second time, not to take away sin, but to bring salvation to those who eagerly await him. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Alleluia, 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 Alleluia. Blessed are the poor in spirit. For theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Alleluia, Alleluia, Alleluia. The Lord be with you and with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Mark. Glory to you, O Lord. In the course of his teaching, Jesus said to the crowds, Beware of the scribes who like to go around in long robes and accept greetings in the marketplaces, seats of honor in synagogues, and places of honor at banquets. They devour the houses of widows and, as a pretext, recite lengthy prayers. They will receive a very severe condemnation. He sat down opposite the treasury and observed how the crowd was putting money into the treasury. Many rich people put in large sums. A poor widow also came and put in two small coins worth a few cents. Calling his disciples to himself, he said to them, Amen, I say to you, this poor widow put in more than all the other contributors to the treasury, for they have all contributed from their surplus wealth, but she from her poverty, has contributed all she had, her whole livelihood. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Today our readings are all chosen, I think, with uh, the intention of having us focus on a very basic, uh, very foundational part of the Christian life, and that is the idea of generosity. And uh, generosity is one of those things that doesn't necessarily come naturally. You know, I can't tell you, I mean, I could tell you tons of stories about how it is easy to be, well, not generous, uh, to be greedy or to be selfish, but... Uh, Maybe one will help. I remember uh, about 15 years ago, I went to visit one of my old college friends and uh, his family. And I went into his house and 
we sat down and his son, whose name was Jack, came in and he was six or seven or eight years old. And Jack had a Nintendo 64. And I had a Nintendo 64. And so I said, oh, wow, Nintendo 64. And, and my friend said, you guys can play Nintendo together. And uh, Jack wanted to play some Batman themed game. And so uh, it was one of those things where there was no two player mode. And so we were gonna have to take turns. And so he started playing. And finally his dad said, Jack, let Father Allen play. And Jack said, just a minute, I just need to do one more thing. And then five minutes later, his dad said again, Jack, let the priest play. <laughs> and, I, and he said, uh, just one more, I got to do one more thing. And then five minutes later, anyway, the uh, machine ended up being unplugged and <laughs> put away because he would never share the controller. And you notice, I noticed that a lot in, in uh, young children especially. Uh, they feel like if they give something up, it will be gone forever. And uh, they, they don't want to share. As I said, it doesn't seem to come naturally. But we, as we grow older, learn that there's great value in it and that it helps society to be well, happier and better and holier. But it's also part of the Christian imperative. And if you think about it, it makes a great deal of sense. Now, for instance, take our second reading today. In that reading, the writer of the letter to the Hebrews was telling us the story of Jesus Christ and how he sacrificed himself to take away our sins. Jesus, of course, was willing to give everything he had, up to and including his whole life, uh, for the sake of our salvation. And that's really what the ideal is. That's what we're supposed to be willing to do. In our first reading, we heard about the widow of Zarephath, and she was called to feed the prophet Elijah, even though she was on the verge of starvation herself. Well, he made her a promise, and because of the promise, and the, her trust in that promise, she fed the prophet for a year. And we see an even better example in the gospel. In the gospel, Jesus sees this woman who's given two small coins that are worth a few cents. But again, it's everything she has. And those are the examples that we're supposed to place before ourselves today. We are supposed to be people who are ready, willing, and able to give where there is a need. God understands we don't have limitless resources. He understands we don't have limitless time. But he also understands that there is need out there, need for what we can give, whether it's time or whether it's the money we have or, or just good ideas and encouragement. But we are supposed to be people who are ready, willing, and able to come forward when the need presents itself to give what we can, just as that widow did and just as Jesus himself would do on the cross. That is part and parcel of who we are called to be. People who, when the need is presented, we say, yes, I'll do all that I can. It's not always easy, but it leads to a life that is marked by that sense of generosity, that sense of self-sacrifice, and a life that is truly Christian. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. And now let us profess our faith. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God. Begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven and by the Holy Spirit, was incarnate to the Virgin Mary, and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven, and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. 
I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Now let us bring our prayers and petitions before God, our Almighty Father. For all members of the church, through, gr through God's grace, may we continue to serve him through our lives of intentional discipleship. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For political leaders, may God's wisdom inspire them in seeking the common good above all else. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the sick, the poor, and the mourning, may God's gracious mercy bring them comfort and healing. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For this community of faith, may the Holy Spirit help us to bear good fruit in service to one another. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. And for Monsignor Edward Zeitler, for whom this Mass is being offered, and for all those who have died, may they soon rest in the fullness of God's kingdom, together with all the angels and saints. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Heavenly Father, you are faithful and kind. In your wisdom, please hear and answer our prayers this day, for we offer them through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you, fruit of the earth and work of human hands, it will become for us the bread of life. Blessed be God forever. By the mystery of this water and wine, may we come to share in the divinity of Christ who has humbled himself to share in our humanity. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you, fruit of the vine and work of human hands, it will become our spiritual drink. Blessed be God forever. Pray, my brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. Look with favor, we pray, O Lord, upon the sacrificial gifts offered here, that celebrating in mystery the passion of your Son, we may honor it with loving devotion through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you and with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God. For you laid the foundations of the world and have arranged the changing of times and seasons. You formed man in your own image, and set humanity over the whole world and all its wonder, to rule in your name over all you have made, and forever praise you in your mighty works through Christ our Lord. And so with all the angels we praise you, as in joyful celebration we acclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you.
In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, and Lawrence, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember your servant, Monsignor Edward Zeitler, whom you have called from this world to yourself. Grant that he, who was united with your son in a death like his, may also be one with him in his resurrection. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with the blessed apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him, and with him, and in him. O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. And graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, and my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always, and with your spirit. And now let us offer each other a sign of peace. Peace be with you. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. Now, since we cannot have regular communion together, please recite with me this prayer so that we may have spiritual communion. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most holy sacrament, 
I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot receive you at this moment sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you were already there, and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen. Let us pray. Nourished by this sacred gift, O Lord, we give you thanks and beseech your mercy that by the pouring forth of your spirit, the grace of integrity may endure in those your heavenly power has entered through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you and with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go forth, the Mass is ended. Thanks be to God. Now, uh, there are a few announcements today, but before that, because Thursday is Veterans Day, I'm supposed to lead you all in a rousing chorus of God Bless America. So please sing along. God bless America, land that I love. Stand beside her and guide her through the night with the light from above. From the mountains to the prairies, to the oceans white with foam. God bless America, my home sweet home. God bless America, my home sweet home. Uh, for all you veterans out there, thank you for your service. I must say that one of my favorite things about being a pastor is I can walk in the office and I'll say, we all deserve a day off. And so as a veteran, I decided we'll take Veterans Day off. So the office will be closed on Thursday this week. Um, however, there is something else on Thursday, so I, being the only veteran in the office, don't get Thursday off because we're having a holy hour here on Thursday evening. Uh, mass, or our, week, our regular Thursday weekday Mass, is at 5.30 p.m. After that, we will expose the Blessed Sacrament and have time of silent prayer and some non-silent prayer up until seven o'clock in which at which point we'll have benediction uh, and we're supposed to be praying for vocations to the priesthood and religious life so that'll be thursday night beginning right around six o'clock if you'd like to get here a little early and come to the 5 30 mass that would be excellent um i guess that's going to be it for today because i can't think of any other announcements so have a, a good day and a good rest of the week